Hello, this is Eric of Ion Software. Welcome to this tutorial, an introduction to Fusion's Volume Fog tool. The Volume Fog tool only works on images that have a world position pass. The WPP, as we call it, can either be rendered in your 3D application or created in Fusion directly. For the sake of this demo, we will create the most simple WPP possible, which is basically an empty 3D scene surrounded by a transparent sphere. That sphere becomes visible when I bring the opacity up, but we want it to be invisible and just create WPP coordinates. To do that, we bring the opacity back down to zero and disable the Ignore Transparent Pixels in AUX Channels option. Doing so allows to render auxiliary channels even when the object itself is fully transparent. Make sure to activate world coordinates in the renderer's output channels and set it to 32-bit float in the image tab. As you would expect, the result of the 3D render is black with no alpha. To visualize the world position pass, we can add a channel boolean and set it to copy the renderer's X, Y and Z position channels into the RGB channels. You might need to set the view to normalize in order to view the WPP. Now we have a basic setup that allows using the Volume Fog tool. We connect the renderer's output to the image input of the Volume Fog tool and view it. The entire image turns white. This is because the Volume Fog tool also needs a 3D camera data to evaluate the fog correctly. Simply attaching our 3D merge to the 3D scene input of the tool fixes that and we see a basic volumetric cube with its center sitting at the default position of 0, 0, 0. When you move your camera, you'll see that the volumetric cube moves accordingly based on the WPP output of the 3D renderer. Let's see how to refine the look of the volume fog. To explain how it works, we use a simple background tool, dimensions of 512 by 512 pixels, with an ellipse mask and attach it to the volume fog's fog image input. As you might expect, the volume now turns into something that resembles a cylinder. If we bring the samples down, you can better observe how that volume is created. Based on the volume fog's size and scale, the image is sort of extruded along the z-axis. The more samples we use for this, the more homogeneous the fog looks. The next slider defines the z-slices. That means you can actually use an image sequence to give your fog a more irregular look. Bringing the value up obviously does not change the look of this particular fog when using a static background. To better demonstrate what happens, we use a text plus tool with a timecode modifier. Let's bring the samples down again, but increase the number of Z slices to 2. As you can see, the volume fog now takes the first two images of the text plus tool, which is 00 and 01, and blends between them. If we increase the first slice time, you see that now different images from the text plus tool are used to create the fog. However, when pressing playback, the fog remains static. The more Z slices we set, the more images from the incoming sequence are taken to create the fog. Keep in mind though, that this might become quite memory intensive based on the XY resolution of the fog image and the number of slices and samples. In this tutorial, you learned the basics of creating a fog volume and got an idea on how the volume works. Stay tuned for part two.